सो हेलो एवरी वन दिस वीडियो टॉक्स अबाउट द टॉपिक विच इज़ नोन एज सेमाफोर सो सेमाफोर बेसिकली आर द प्रोसेस सिंक्रोनाइजेशन मैकेनिज्म सो इन दिस वीडियो वील लुक हाउ सेमाफोर हेल्प्स इन प्रोसेस सिंक्रोनाइजेशन वॉट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ सेमाफोर्स हाउ वी कैन इम्प्लीमेंट सेमाफोर यूजिंग दी सी सी यूजिंग दी सी प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज एंड सो ऑन सो बेसिकली सेमाफोर्स हेल्प्स इन अचीविंग प्रोसेस सिंक्रोनाइजेशन सो दिस इज़ वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम्स एंड सो वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द टर्म फर्स्ट प्रोसेस सिंक्रोनाइजेशन सो बेसिकली इफ यू कुड रिकॉल दैट वी हैव डिस्कस दिस इन क्लास ऑल्सो दैट लेट सपोज आई हैव टू ट्रांजेक्शन विद मी ओके और टू प्रोसेस पी वन एंड पी टू विच डज दी दर्स्ट प्रोसेस ट्रांसफर्स मनी फ्रॉम अकाउंट ए टू अकाउंट बी दी P2 process transfers money from account B to account A. So I have these two processes with me, and what I want, I want both the process should execute separately. Okay, they should be, uh, or let's say, uh, so both the process should execute separately. Or if I talk about the multi-threading mechanism, so let's say if this is thread one, this is thread two. Threads are nothing but the lightweight process. So if I have thread T1, I have thread T2, and I want that these threads should be executed synchronously. Means first the this thread should execute, second this thread should execute. I don't want them to execute parallelly because in multi-processing system you have the processes which can execute simultaneously or parallelly basically. But I don't want that. so in order to achieve correct output here i need some synchronization mechanism which would help me in getting the correct output so that synchronization material is nothing but the semaphores which we'll discuss here so so in order to get this correct output i will be using the two types of semaphores so basically semaphore provides or gives us two operations here so what are these two operations the two operations are known as wait operation and the signal operation so the wait operation is denoted by p the signal operation is denoted by v so these are the two operations that are provided by semaphores that would help in achieving the synchronization so basically when we talk about synchronization that means we'll having we'll be have mutual exclusion we'll have mutual exclusion between the process and there won't be any race conditions between the process so what these two uh, operations does uh you will basically be implementing the functionality the entire functionality of these two uh, operations and you will see how these two operations helps in the synchronization process so before moving into the two pro, uh, operations let me just first tell you what are the two types of semaphores so the first type of semaphore is known as the binary semaphore and the second is known as the counting semaphore so the binary semaphore it is also known as the mutex lock so that and as the name itself implies this is the binary semaphore so it can have value only between only 0 and 1 not between only 0 and 1 so binary semaphore has only two values that is 0 and 1 when i talk about counting semaphore counting semaphore can range over an unrestricted domain so there is no domain for the counting semaphore it could range from minus infinity to plus infinity this is the range of the counting semaphore so these are the two types of semaphores that we will be looking at and we will be implementing the counting semaphore using what the wait and the signal system calls or the wait and the signal operations so let's let's just now go to the another slide let me add some slides okay 
So let's now see what exactly are the two system calls that I am talking about. First was the down system call or also known as the wait system call or the entry section code. Okay. Second was what? Second was the up system call or the signal system call or the exit system call. We have these three names for the uh, first system call and these three names for the second system call. So, and the symbols were the same P, V and this is denoted as P. Now, what are the objectives of these system calls? Let me just tell you. Now, firstly, I talked about the word known as critical section in the class. So, what exactly is the critical section? Critical section is that part of the code as I have just referred in this example, which should be executed independently. So, independently means it, this uh, process has a certain code written, which at a given point of time only one process can execute. So, at any given point of time, what I want, I want only one process. Let us say if I have P1, I want only P1 to be in the critical section. If any other process, let us say P2 comes, I, I do not want it to enter this critical section. And that is why we have an entry section code and the exit section code with the critical section. So, these are the entry section the critical section and the exit uh, section. So, these are the three parts. So, let us say if any process comes, let us suppose here P1 again comes and tries to, so let us suppose there is no P1 here and if P1 comes and wants to enter the critical section, it will first execute this entry section code. If the ex uh, execution is successful, then it would enter the critical section code and then when the critical section code is executed by P1, it implements the exit system call and it exits from the system. So, let us say now if process P2 comes, P2 comes and let us say execute the entry section code and if the execution here is not successful, if the entry section code does not allow the P, does not allow P2 to enter the critical section. So, P2 will not be able to enter this critical section and it will keep on waiting till the entry section code is successful. So, this is the main idea here. So, the this entry section code is denoted by this uh, P and this exit system call is denoted by this the up or signal or the exit wait system call. So, these are the two system calls which are basically implement which will be implementing in the C language and they would help in providing the process synchronization. So, first let us see what is the down or wait or the entry section code. So, let me just write down that code first. So, this is the uh, down section code. I implement the function down which has the argument semaphore s. I check uh, as soon as this function implements what it does, it decrements the value of the semaphore. So, it is doing what? It is decrementing the value of semaphore. Then it checks if s dot value is less than 0, what it will do? it will put process PCB in the suspended list or the process would sleep else it will return. So, this is the down or the wait system uh, the code of the down or the wait system call. And let me also write the code for this up semaphore s. It does exactly the opposite. It will increment 
the value of the semaphore. If s dot value is less than equal to 0, select a process from the suspended list that is wake up and close. So, these are the two implementation of both the down as well as the up system call. Now, with an example, I would show you how basically you can uh, what how basically you can achieve synchronization using these two system calls. So, now let me take some example. Okay, so let us say I have a process, let me take some another color here. Okay, let us say I have uh, a process, let us say I have a semaphore here, I have, I define my semaphore S value, this, this semaphore, this semaphore, I, uh, let us say I have the semaphore S here and I initialize it with the value 3. Okay, I have the semaphore, I initialize it with value 3 and I have process P1 with me. Now, process P1 wants to enter this critical section, but before entering this critical section, it will, exec it will execute the entry section code, which means it will execute this down system, uh, down or wait or the entry section code. So, what this code says, this code says that you first decrement the value of the semaphore. So, I do that. What I will do? I will decrement the value of semaphore. So, the semaphore value is now 2 and it checks if s dot value is less than 2, keep the process in sleep mode. So, here the semaphore value is not less than uh, 0. It is greater than 0. So, what it will do? It, the pro, this, it will not execute this section. It will execute the else part. So, process won't sleep and this return part means add it to the critical section. Okay, so, what P1 will do? P1 will enter into the critical section here because uh, the if statement got false and else statement executed. Now, let us suppose meanwhile P2 process also come, P2 process is also there, it also comes and it also wants to enter the critical section. Again, uh, it will try to execute the entry section code. The entry section code says, uh, decrement the value of the semaphore first. So, I, I would decrement the value of semaphore. Now, the semaphore value is 1. It checks if 1 is less than 0. No, it is not less than 0. This particular portion would not be executed and this will execute. So, P2 also enters the critical section here. Okay. Now, P3 comes. P3 also wants to enter the critical section. Uh, again, the value of s is decremented, so value becomes 0. It checks if s dot value is less than 0. Now, in this case, s dot value 0 is less than 0, that is not true. Again, P3 also enters the critical section. Now, P4 comes. Now, what will happen? P4 again uh, execute this code, the value of semaphore is. So, so firstly, at this point, you can see if the value of semaphore is 0, then it means that no other process could enter the critical section. Now, this we will see how this happens. Currently, the value of semaphore is 0. That means if P4 and the new proce process that comes is the P4, that means P4 would not be able to enter the critical section. Why? Now, see this. Currently, the value of semaphore is 0. Uh, P4 comes, P4 execute this code, the value of semaphore is decremented, so value becomes minus 1. Minus 1 is less than 0, that is true. So, now the process goes into the sleep mode. So, P4 goes into the sleep mode or a queue which is known as blocked process queue. So, this is queue. So, here P4 is there. So, because P4 is in the blocked state or the sleep state. So, P4 is here. Now, let us say P5 also comes. Again, same thing would, hap would happen with P5. The value of semaphore is decremented 
2 minus 2 uh, and again the if statements becomes true and the process again goes into the sleep mode or the blocked mode. So, P5 is also in the blocked queue. So, that is why when the value of semaphore was 0 that itself means that no other process could now enter the critical section. So, that was the indication. Now, what at given point of time let us say if the value of here the value of semaphore is minus 4, minus 2. So, minus 2 indicates that currently two processes that is P4 and P5 are in the blocked state. So, many question comes in exams related to semaphore that what let us say if the value of semaphore is 0, what it means, how many process are in the blocked state, how many process are uh, currently into the critical section whether any process could uh, enter the critical section or not. So, when the value of semaphore is 0 that means no other process now can enter the critical section because the value would be decremented and the if statement will become true. And if the value of semaphore is let us say minus 4 then that means minus 4 means that currently there are 4 processes that are in the blocked or the sleep state. So, this, this is basically the meaning of the uh, semaphore here. Now, let us say what I want now, I want uh, that P1 or let us say P3 has completed its execution. Let me again change the color. So, let us say P3 has completed its execution here. Let me change some color. Hmm. So, P3 here has completed its execution and now it want to exit the, uh, uh, it want to come out of the critical section. When it comes out of the critical section, it will implement this exit system uh, uh, code. So, the exit system code is this, the up signal or the exit system code is this. So, what will happen? Currently, the value of semaphore is minus 2 which you can see here and there are two processes that are in the blocked state. When P3 comes out of the critical section, it increments the value of the semaphore. So, the value of semaphores becomes minus 1 and it check if minus 1 is less than equal to 0, yes it is less than equal to 0 select a process from the suspended list that, that is wake up. So, it will wake up any of the these two process. So, generally the process which comes first into the blocked list is uh, uh, waken up first by the uh, CPU. So, P4 would be wake would come out of the block uh, queue and it would be there in the ready queue. So, this is the ready queue, it will be there in the ready queue. So, ready queue, so what is ready queue? Ready queue means this process P4 is ready for the execution. Whenever the OS get times, OS can take this process and put it into the critical section. So, P4 comes uh, into the ready queue and P4 has the chance to enter into the critical section. Let us suppose uh, the value of, uh, now let us suppose P2 also exit this critical section here. Now, P2 also wants to exit, exit this critical section. Now, what will happen? It will also uh, execute this up system uh, call here and it will increment the value of semaphore. So, the value of semaphore has become 0 now and it will check if 0 is less than 0 equal to 0, yes. It will again wake up P5. So, P5 is also there here, right. So, again now P4 and P5 are ready to enter into the critical section. Now, if P4 wants to enter into the critical section, it will first implement the down system call or the, the entire functionality of the down system call. So, now both P4 and P5 can try entering into the critical section. So, this is the main implementation when we talk about the uh, uh, the semaphores and how we can implement it in the C language. So, this is the entire explanation of the down and the wait system calls and how they help in achieving synchronization. So, your objective is to implement the down and the up system call. So, the uh, this is lab 
assignment 11 which talks about the mutex as well as the semaphore. So, obviously, uh, you will not be implementing the mutex lock, you will only implement the semaphores one and uh, the problem which implements the semaphores weight and system. Uh, weight and signal system call is this problem 1.11.1. Uh, so, you can see here that we have implemented the weight system call, same weight function is there to implement the weight system call and same post function is there to implement the sig uh, signal system call. The second question you do not have to do the second question, only first question you have to do. Now, it is completely up to you. If you want, you can skip this implementation. You can go and refer to the internet with some other uh, code uh, of the uh, of the signal and the weight system call, which is more relevant for you, or let's say which is more easier for you. So that would uh, that is that uh, whatever that is more comfortable to you. So the objective is to implement the weight and uh, signal system call and see how synchronization is achieved. So, entirely whatever process would be there, they internally be, they are doing these things only 1 and 2, internally they are doing these things only. So, this was about the semaphores and the process synchronization. So, okay, thank you everyone.